Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanot here. Today I've got a new review for you. This is of the Noctua NFF12 Industrial PPC, which stands for Protected Performance Cooling 2000 PWM Fan. Now those of you that are familiar with Noctua probably know them by their traditional beige and brown colored fans. Well, this fan is brown and black, as you can see behind me. And that's not the only place that there is a difference. It's also in the design of this fan. It's a little bit more rugged. It's a rugged version of the NFF12 Premium Fan that you might be familiar with. And what that means is they've added some features to uh, make it more durable for industrial settings and also it's a higher speed version of that fan. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this and compare it to some other fans. And I want to thank uh, Performance PCs for sponsoring this so that I could bring this to you and see if it's something that you want to put in your system. So uh, let's go ahead and start out with a closer look. Alright, well let's take a look now at the packaging really quick. Uh, compared to the more colorful and uh, the additional flaps with see-through panels on the uh, commercial packaging, uh, here we have a very, I think, elegant and I guess the idea was an industrial look. Just a uh, black and brown box with the industrial PPC logo and uh, the uh, full uh, model number, part number of the fan on it. And on the, uh, the rear of the box, the uh, particulars for it, you know, the product name, the dimensions, connector type, uh, a protection rating, bearing information, RPMs, airflow, noise, static pressure, and power, uh, again with uh, mean time between failure, which in the uh, industrial world is very, very important. So that is all you got on that packaging. Now inside the box, what you get is the fan, the NFF12 Industrial PPC 2000 PWM fan, and you also get a bag of mounting screws. And that's it. So let's have a closer look at this guy, and I'll describe some of the features for it. All right, well, first up, taking a, a look at the fan itself. The fan is uh, all one solid construction, with the exception of the anti-vibration pads that are put on here. And the cable is 16 inches long with a, uh, the, the same type of sleeving they've always used. It's got heat shrink at both ends, both at the four pin connector end and up to the base of the fan. It's kind of a rubberized, it's not a weaved um, sleeve that you would find in, uh, in, on some other uh, cables, but it's the same one Nocto has always used. So if you're feeling familiar with that, that's what they've given you. I really wish that they um, would do something about this and sleeve all the way up to the motor actually is what I prefer but that's just my own personal preference so a good long cable um, again solid construction and uh, basically if you go look at the um, Noctua website there's about 18 different uh, things that they've uh, highlighted the features of this fan but I'll try to uh, give you the summary they have this NFF 12 industrial PPC 2000 PWM fan, basically the PPC stands for Protected Performance Cooling, is a ruggedized high-speed version of the award-winning retail model, the regular NFF12. Um, the, uh, that NFF12, I believe, is 1500 RPM. This is 2000. This, instead of a single-phase motor, uses a three-phase motor, and is supposed to provide um, superior airflow and pressure capacity while keeping noise levels and power consumption um, down as compared to other high-speed fans. Now it's got a fiberglass reinforced palm eye construction and it's water certified, uh, water and dust uh, certified protection. So that's one of the key things for its uh, industrial PPC rating. And actually there's a, um, a standard IP52 is a water and dust protection uh, standard that has a special coating of varnish that covers the motor and the PC the PCB um, so that it complies to keep it uh, you know working within um, specifications in uh, tough environments so it says it's not only highly dust resistant but also also withstands dripping water equivalent to three millimeters of rainfall rainfall per minute minute so um, again uh, designed for industrial environments and um, also contains its SSO bearing technology, which uh, gives it a uh, 
lifespan of over 150,000 hours between failures. And um, then, of course, one of the things that uh, they provide is a six-year warranty. So, um, you know, it's uh, designed for uh, more a rugged use, but if it's good enough to be used in industrial applications, then for our systems, uh, it should do the job quite well. So, uh, well, we'll find out about that. Let me go ahead and turn this over and give you a look at the back end of it. Basically, uh, has all these um, special things that uh, they identify the um, these angular distances with vortex control notches. Notches. Again, all of this is to help with uh, noise and uh, airflow. So uh, you just have the logo with the uh, current rating, power draw, and the voltage. And uh, that's it. I mean, it's a nice, sturdy, solid fan. Definitely much nicer looking, in my opinion, than the uh, than the the beige and brown versions that they've always used. I like that they have the black, and of course they had to keep their signature this brown on it. But that's okay with me. So the key thing next is to see how well it performs. So I'll go ahead and uh, take you to the test bench and show you the setup, and then we're going to compare it against a, uh, a few uh, other fans that are popular out there, and. Uh, see how well it compares. So on the test bed what I have is an i7-3930K on a EVGA dark X79 motherboard that has 32 gigabytes of Kingston Hyperbeast uh, X RAM running at 2133 megahertz. We have the GPU is an Asus uh, HD 7970 Matrix Platinum and the radiator on there is, of course, the Hardware Labs Black Ice SR1 360. Uh, down for a boot drive, I have an Intel 180GB SSD and then a 500GB uh, Seagate drive for storage with the uh, DVD drive, the Alpha Cool Single Bay Res uh, with a DDC uh, pump on the back of that and an Bit Phoenix fan controller so that I can ensure that all of the fans are set to their max settings when we're running these tests. Now from software standpoint to test it, what I use is OCCT version 4.4.1 and I have the CPU impact test running with uh, 64 bits and all logical cores enabled. I run it for 30 minutes and then I'll let it cool for about 30 minutes and then I'll run again and I'll do that uh, twice for each set of fans and the overclocks that I'll run are at 4.0 at 1.2 volts and then 4.5 at 1.35 volts so uh, those are the temps and then what I'll do is um, those are the uh, settings and then what I'll do is I'll be recording the min and the max uh, temperatures and then I'll take the averages of each of the three runs for each set of fans so that's, then I'll put it all into a table for you, and then we'll see uh, how they turn out with this uh, setup. All right, so one of the things that's also important about uh, the fans uh, that we all can appreciate is how quiet they are when they're running. So. Uh, I'm going to put a microphone right on top of the radiator in the same spot for all of the fans. Right now we have the, uh, these are the Gentle Typhoons on here. I'm going to put the mic on there and let it go for about, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds. We'll do the same so you can hear all of them. And here we have the NF F12's industrial PPC fans. Let's get a listen to them running at 2000 RPM. Here we have the JetFlow 120s running at 2,000 RPM. 
Let's have a listen to them. And here we have the Corsair SP120s at running at 1450 RPM. You would think these would sound quieter. Let's uh, let's have a listen. Now here we have the Noctua NFF12 premium fan, not the industrial version, but the premium one which runs at 1500, or 1500 RPM. So here's the results of the 4.0 overclock at 1.2 volts. We have delta T shown there. The blue indicates the idle temps. And uh, the worst of them was the gentle typhoon at on average 5 degrees delta T. And the best was the cooler master jet flow, although that was really only about a half a degree better than uh, all the other fans. So, uh, But at, at load, you'll see the Noctua industrial PPC fan uh, was the best by about a half a degree. The next was the Cooler Master Jet Flow at 23, and all the rest were uh, over a degree more than those guys. And here are the results of the 4.5 overclock at 1.35 volts. Uh, with that additional voltage comes uh, hotter temperatures. At, at idle, uh, we have the uh, worst of the bunch was actually the NFF12 premium fan, averaging about 8.2 degrees delta T. And the cooler master jet flow with the best at 5.5 delta T. But the uh, general typhoon and the industrial PPC 2000 were about the same. So they're just about a degree more uh, for the idle at this um, uh, voltage. But when it came to load, the Noctua NFF12 industrial PPC 2000 PWM fan actually was the best at 30 degrees delta T uh, with uh, the both the general typhoon and the Cooler Master Jet Flow uh, about a degree, 1.2 degrees, 1.3 degrees behind it. And the worst of the bunch uh, in this setting was the Corsair SP120. Uh, so, um, so overall, the industrial PPC 2000 Nocta did pretty well uh, with the Cooler Master uh, and the Gentle Typhoon actually with a, uh, a second, but still over a degree uh, warmer than the uh, uh, Noctua. NFF 12 industrial PPC PWM. Now next up before I go into the conclusion what I'd like to do is give you one more listen to the fans but they'll just all be in succession there won't be any talking so you can get maybe five to ten seconds worth of audio of each of those so that you can uh, get one last listen to them uh, so let's do that now So there we have it guys, what do you think? From a looks perspective, I gotta tell you it's refreshing to see that Noctua went away from their traditional beige and brown coloring to this black and brown. Definitely goes with so many more color schemes. Most people have black cases and so I think that uh, they, went, they, they listened to people uh, hopefully and they went down the right path on this. And uh, that just, just 
thumbs up in my book. Uh, from a construction standpoint, thing is solid. Uh, obviously, it has the IP52 spec that makes it more durable uh, with the coating to prevent moisture and stuff from affecting it. So, uh, you know, for the ruggedized enhancements and environments that it's designed for, uh, you know, you can't help but take advantage of that for our own build. So, I think they did a good job with the looks of construction. The only pet peeve I have really is the cable. Uh, you know where the sleeving ends before it goes into the body of the frame of the fan and then up to the motor You can see that I mean they could at least use uh, black wire underneath that if they're going to do that But again, that's just a pet peeve of mine now from a performance perspective You saw it in my testing and again uh, that is just my setup here and uh, your actual mileage may vary but underneath uh, my test setup and um, procedures that I use it came out the best underneath load in both the 1.2 uh, volts uh, at the 4.0 overclock and the 1.35 volts at the uh, uh, 4.5 overclock. It came out uh, ahead. Uh, it, it was close to the silent flow, but one of the things that I made sure that you guys, uh, you know, had to also weigh in was the uh, audio noise. Now um, the sound of the jet flow was uh, made worse, I think, by their design. There, it was no, uh, the air coming out around that fan is really the, the bulk of the noise that you heard on the microphone. Um, obviously, the Noct was, they spent a lot of money and a lot of effort in their designs. Uh, they're much quieter. And then the quietest of the, of the bunch really was the Corsair, uh, you know, uh, uh, SP120, but that was also a much lower RPM fan, 1450 RPM, so you would expect that to be quieter. So, uh, but the uh, the Noctuan FF12 Industrial PPC 2000 fan, in my opinion, came out right in the middle from the audio standpoint. So it was the best performing of the 2000 R PWM fans. Uh, and audio-wise, it was uh, probably about the same as the uh, General Typhoon, uh, roughly. And uh, and also the um, the NFF12 Premium fan. That was They were probably about the same to my ear. Um, Actually, the uh, premium might have been just a little bit lower because that also is a uh, 1500 RPM fan. So, yeah, that was a little bit quieter. So, um, but again, from an audio perspective, definitely, um, you know, not a, um, a disturbing fan. And plus, uh, you know, I did this on the bench top, put the microphone right up next to it. You would have it inside your case and on radiator. So, uh, so I think. Um, you know, I, I think that was fair, a fair assessment, and, uh, and it sounded uh, it sounded reasonably quiet for me. Um, from a price perspective, well, this fan costs twenty six ninety five. It's only three dollars more than an NFF twelve uh, premium. So, if you want to have the additional durability and the looks of this fan, I think that that additional three dollars is well worth it. Uh, if you're going to go out and buy new fans for a build and it fits in your color scheme, it's a great performing fan, I would definitely do it. If you already have the old NFF 12s, uh, you know, to, to upgrade to those, I, I don't think that you need to do that. The performance um, is better, um, but not significantly enough to warrant going out and get a new set if you have the old Noctuas, uh, at least in my, my opinion. So um, anyway, I think that's about it, guys. Um, I give this fan out of five nuts, I'll give it four. It's still a little bit on the pricey side as fans go, but I do think it's, um, uh, you know, a fair and reasonable for the performance you get. This will garner four. So uh, I hope you liked this review. If you did, please like and favorite. And if you're so inclined, please subscribe. Thanks again to Performance PCs for sponsoring these fans so that I can bring them to you and let you decide what's going to work for you and go in your next rig. That's it from Ron Tonight. Thanks for watching.